But anyway, we got to get on with the news here because I know everybody wants to talk about the hangman. So let's talk about what's going on with the hangman. So I will explain this exactly how it's happened to me, as I normally do in these situations, because uh, things happen and then, you know, things change. So what happened was I am in Hawaii, and so the show doesn't air here until 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. Okay, that's when I could first watch the show here, 1 a.m. Eastern. So last night, I started getting text messages, you know, check on the hangman. Is hangman okay? I was like, oh, man, what happened now? So I can't even watch the show yet. So I go on uh, Twitter, and I see the animated gif of him, you know, flipping out of the Samoa Joe muscle buster and landing on his foot and going down. And uh, and immediately getting out of the ring. I thought that doesn't look good. So I started texting people. Is the hangman okay? And the responses I got were, I don't know. What happened? And I was like, well, isn't everybody been talking about this? And so, you know, then I got another report from, you know, somebody who was at ringside and they said when Hangman went down, he was he was trying to tell the camera guy that his ankle was broken. He thought his ankle was broken. So I started texting people. I'm like, is, did, it, did Hangman break his ankle? And they're like, I don't know, man. That sounds horrible. What, what horrible luck. And as the night wore on, it was like more people started hearing that Hangman was hurt. But nobody nobody knew exactly what was going on. They just heard, you know, Hangman looks like he's hurt. So I went to uh, bed after the show. And I woke up this morning, and I started getting these messages that Hangman's not hurt. It's a work. And so I thought, what? And so I started messaging people again, and I was like, Hangman's injury was a work? And their response was, what? I had no idea. So essentially what happened was Hangman is not hurt. Hangman, however, I don't know if... I don't know if the people in the match knew. All I know is almost nobody knew. He worked an ankle injury. And the reason that he worked the ankle injury is because he has something going on in his personal life, and he may not be able to work the pay-per-view. And so he worked this ankle injury, and essentially, if he can work the pay-per-view then I guess he's going to tape it up and work because he's not actually hurt. And if he can't work the pay-per-view, then this is the cover story as to why he can't work the pay-per-view. He injured his ankle. And virtually nobody knew about it. And I don't know if even the people in the match knew that he was going to do this because if you look at the timing of it, what happens is the very last spot that he's required to do, that's when he injured his ankle he tagged out, he went outside, and he wasn't needed in the match at any point from that point forward. So, you know, I could tell you that a lot of people in AEW love Hangman. We've been talking about this for a long time. He's very popular. He's a very likable guy. And, uh, and there were people very close to Hangman who even this morning didn't know what was going on. So, you know, the idea that, you know, everybody was worked with this story. Actually, everybody wasn't worked. Well, I mean, they were worked, but it wasn't like this was Christian Cage and, and you know, Adam Copeland, for example. Adam Copeland takes a concerto, and everybody knows it's an injury angle. The thing was planned, blah, blah, blah. This was not that at all. And I presume that him and Tony talked about it, but I can't even tell you that for sure. But point of the story is, he is okay. He may work the pay-per-view. He may not work the pay-per-view. And I don't know if we're going to know whether he's going to work the pay-per-view or not until maybe the very last minute. I don't know exactly what the personal issues are, but they are there, and that's what's going on. In a business built by liars who lie. <laughs> and I'm not throwing Hangman Adam Page under some sort of carny bus here. If he's got a personal issue going on, he's got a personal issue going on. But uh, how you just went about uh, describing things and how they're playing out, you know, guys 
working locker rooms and working this person for whatever reason or that person or an insurance company. I mean, it's just it's just such a well, pro wrestling he, story he was, in some ways. I, I want to make this clear, okay? Uh-huh. I don't think that he was trying to work people. Like, let's go back to. to I think he's uh, giving himself an excuse. Like, I'm saying, I'm not killing him for exactly. for doing this. I, I don't think that there was anything like this. Is not WCW where Bishop would work the boys. Yeah, because he was trying to whatever. This is like he doesn't know if he can work the show, and so this is what he came up with in case he can't work the show. But, but because not- of all of that, the history of things, and because people are the way they are now on social media and stuff like that, it just, you know, because I saw a bunch of people piling on on Dave about, you know, he got worked, and, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it's such, you know, it's probably all very innocent here, but it's just, it comes across as such a, a pro wrestling thing to me. Well, I want to make this clear as well that, like, whatever the personal issue is, uh, it doesn't matter, okay? It's, it's, I know everybody wants to know everything, but this is a personal matter. Yeah, and if it's it a alone. personal matter where he might not be able to work a pay per view, then that's his personal matter to deal with. And maybe he doesn't want to explain to everybody what's going on. And thus he came up with an idea in case he can't be there. And that's it. So I don't know what's going on. I do know that he's okay. Now, another person that apparently is okay is Madison Rain. Uh, She had a terrible match with Deanna Perazzo. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if something happened during the commercial break. But the match was okay until the break. But then when they came back from the break, this match was just, it was like, it was atrocious. I mean, the worst AEW match you've seen in forever. And I don't know what happened, but Madison was, she was slow. It, it looked, I mean, it was just, it was bad. It was and bad. then <laughs> Deanna went for like a, a flat liner or something. And for whatever reason, Madison was going to like flip over. I don't even know why. And she landed right on her head. The ref, boom, dropped down to make sure that she was all right, and apparently she was. And she sent out on X today that I'm okay. Thanks so much to everybody who celebrated my dynamite return, those who checked on me afterwards. To those who have never stepped into a ring but tweeted awful things at me with zero knowledge of what actually happened, thanks for watching. Have a great day. The commentary team then talked about everything. So I don't know what happened. She didn't explain what happened, but uh, she landed on her head, and apparently she's all right. And uh, and hopefully she is all right because it's wrestling. And a lot of times we hear people are all right, but they're not all right. And uh, and the last one we have to mention is Shotzi. You may have talked about this yesterday, but uh, she has a torn ACL. And one of those deals jumped off the apron, landed on two feet, boom, blew out her ACL. And it's not unusual. It happens all the time. I've talked to people who have seen it happen multiple times. And it sucks. And all the best to her. Back in the world more of the life. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. 
all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.